her name was Carmen, and she didn't take rides from strangers, and she didn't speak in English. And one morning, it was light, misty rain, and she took a ride. There were other occasions I gave her a ride. And uh, I became friends with her best I could. I had to bone up on my Spanish, so I could flirt with her and stuff, and like that I was single and trying to make a relationship happen. I was once again outside my marriage with this person. Anthony Schur has distorted his sense of self. His private um, narrative of himself is that he is a man who struggles with fidelity issues. When in fact, the reality is he's a pedophile, he's a psychopath, and he's kidnapping and beating and raping these women and goes on to then kill them. His detachment from reality is disturbing. So from that perspective, I think Anthony Shore very much believed this narrative that he was selling. This public persona that he put on, I think at some point became fused with his own sense of reality and his own sense of understanding what was actually happening. And I think it probably allowed him to get up every single day and go about his day. I find it interesting that he would try to learn some Spanish so that he might be able to communicate with her a little bit better. That seems for some reason kind of absurd and highly manipulative. So with the manipulativeness, the expectations, the unrealistic expectations and the willingness to violate not only societal norms but laws. So why does he target young Latino girls? He very intentionally is targeting someone who's vulnerable and we all know that if you don't speak good English, you're much more vulnerable, you're much less likely to seek help. Psychopaths go after vulnerable people because they don't want to be caught. One morning we pulled in behind a Dairy Queen and so uh, amenable to a kiss. And when I pushed her further, it got out of hand and she freaked out. She said, hey, man, not this way. I love you, but not this way, not here. I opened her eyes and she was resisting. And then I had this quick consumption that I wanted to possess her. She became real violent, just fighting on to get out of the car. I got real paranoid. Because now this wasn't a consensual thing. I locked the door so she couldn't get up. She didn't go well. And I didn't have sex with her, as it turns out, but I tried to. So I panicked and once again to avoid discovery. I strangled her. He responds the way a psychopath responds, the way a sex offender responds. He locks the door and keeps her in the car. And no doubt her drive to fight, her drive to survive, likely was more of an arousal for him. And that is really a marker of sadism. This is hyper-predation and manipulation. His story is that it's about rejection. But he's setting up the rejection carefully by befriending them. And when he's pretty sure that they've been groomed to trust him, he launches a provoked attack so that they will reject him. They're very mapped out executions, very carefully controlled, and they give them deep pleasure throughout the whole thing. I literature because I fucked my hands up on the first one. I used some piece of wood and twisted it. I fished it and left it. I was sick. I was scared to death. I was paranoid for days. Anthony Shore was known as the tourniquet killer. And he had the instruments he needed to make this more sophisticated ligature. Shore's choice to strangle the victim with a tourniquet allowed him to prolong the victim's death to ensure that she he wanted it to be. It makes him a very sophisticated, dangerous psychopath. Probably the hardest thing in life is to forgive oneself. Forgiving others is pretty hard, believe me, I know. But to forgive yourself is a hard road to hoe, and I finally 
have come to the point where I've reached that peace in myself. Well, aren't you lucky? You've forgiven yourself for killing innocent girls because they didn't want to have sex with you? It's a kind of laughable statement, and he's saying it in a serious manner. To assume that he's forgiven himself would be to assume that he ever felt bad. He's not bothered by it. He feels good about who he is as a person. I wanted to prove to myself that I didn't have to take a life. There was a girl that I had fantasies about. A girl's name was Several times I've seen her coming home. I knew that she was a latchkey kid. So I had broken into the house and I waited for her to get there. And she got there. So I wore a t shirt and a hood and sunglasses so she couldn't be recognized. I told her it was a burglary and tied her up with electrical cord and raised her. I started to strangle her and I thought, no, I just can't. I just need to get the fuck out of here. Because I had promised myself I wasn't going to do this. So I bolted. it. You see, escalation, what could be more invasive than entering her own home and then violently raping her while she's tied up? He's taking more risks. And typically, this kind of killer, when they take more risks, it's because it gives them more thrill. He is a sexual psychopath. Befriending them and raping them is no longer exciting. I would even hazard a guess that he gets a thrill that he was able to control himself. This means he's really superior. I left. I walked out, back to work, scared to death. I was paranoid, God, for days. I was sure because I'd left somebody as a witness. Even though we live back here on death row or behind these walls, there's still a quality of life to be had that is beautiful. I'm not saying there isn't a lot of chaos and despair, but I'm saying... And I talked to her, and she was struggling. There wasn't anybody around, and I don't know what the fuck went through my mind exactly. I just picked her up and threw her in the room, and nobody saw it. I remember using duct tape to find her hands and feet. And I told her to be quiet. I tried to have sex with her, but it wouldn't happen. Eventually, she fought my hell. He's getting more impulsive, but he's also getting more bold in the crimes that he's committing. Because now he's just snatching children off the street. He's not even trying to engage in grooming behavior. And he's also given in to the idea that he's going to kill the victims. He's gotten comfortable killing. His sexual perversion runs deeper than is suggested by the, the previous victims. This is really you know, a preteen, a late stage kid. So it really reflects the depravity. I knew I couldn't just let her go because obviously she's going to go and tell. So I did the literature. I just thought that I'd be sick for what the hell was wrong with you. know this I would love to get a stay I would that would be awesome but at the same time I'm ready for what happens next it's kind of like when you get to the front of the line at the roller coaster ride I'm excited to find out what happens most of us don't have the uh, privilege of knowing when it's going to happen so it, they don't prepare I've had time to prepare and think about this I saw this girl, she was at a payphone, and she was mad. 
She started storming off. I just said, hey, would you like to go ahead? She says, man, I'm going to see my boyfriend somewhere. No problem. You jump right in. And we drove anywhere near where she wanted to go. So I thought, you know, hell, I'm going to go for it. Pulling the parking lot. I started heading on her. She was joking, like, no, 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 I got a boyfriend. To the back of the van. She fought. She hit me hard. Blue blue. There wasn't gonna be any sex with her. So I restrained her. Tied her hands and taped her face. Got some food from Nebraska. And I couldn't get around. I remember that. I just was so sick in my brain. I couldn't stop. And I used a twisted nylon rope. This is a killer who likes watching his very young victims give up, lose hope, suffer, and watches the light fade from their eyes. He's a very, very cruel man. His impulsivity was starting to spiral out of control. I think he was worried that he was losing control of himself. I drove and drove and drove and drove. I'm way the hell out. I pulled her out into a field and laughed like a bat out of hell, scared to death. Dana was discovered naked and dead, having vanished eight days earlier. She was my friend. She was something very, very special. And, uh, and she's gone. One of his daughters finally got up the courage to talk about the molesting history. He would feed his daughters hot chocolate and was drugging them. Sure, never really had an attachment for his children that wasn't self-focused. Drugging them to assure that it went undetected all these years, that he could continue to molest them and they would never fight back. The man now charged with the crime, 41-year-old Anthony Allen Shore. Investigators say he confessed to carrying out four sex slayings. Anthony Allen Shore, for the first time, walked into the courtroom that's likely to be the scene of his capital murder trial. The killings occurred over a nine-year span. It puts things in a different perspective when you're facing your impending demise. I don't want anyone to cry on my behalf. If anything, throw a party. Guys, everybody's got a distance.